Ms. Benson, thank you so much for being here with us on our show. We are honored to have you. Oh, thank you. It's my privilege. I heard in a previous interview that uh, you were not intimidated by anyone but God. That's correct. I know correct. faith is a very important, if not the most important part of your life. It is. And, and there comes my first question. Um, you have said that your faith has been your driving force, guiding you along the way personally and professionally. Can you talk a little more about that? Well, I've been faith-filled for many years. I um, started out very young, probably around 12, when I started getting uh, very faith-filled. I uh, started understanding more about what was going on, had a lot of questions. I was in Catholic school all my life, except the last two years. And, um, you know, I grew up in some very humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. um, and I uh, grew up on the West Bank, on the corner of Octavia and, I'm sorry, um, Opelousas and Whitney Avenue. So it was very humble, and you know, I think when you're in those positions, you uh, have the opportunity to learn more. Mm -hmm. um, your faith, how does it incite in, in your daily work and your decisions and, and how you get up and you conduct your business? Well, I pray every morning that mm -hmm. I make the right decision. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what's put in front of me, I always want to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And I ask God every day to help me make those decisions. You attend Mass daily? I used to, until I married my husband. And then when I married my husband, my world got a little rocked with all the business. <laughs> and we were really busy. So I've, I haven't, I don't go to daily Mass, but I do go to Sunday Mass. And uh, I'm very active in the church. You're very, very busy too. You travel for um, most of the games. You are here for the home games of the Pelicans always, uh, the Saints games. You travel for those too. Um, how do you combine all these things in your daily life? Well, every day I ask God to just give me the strength to do what I'm supposed to be doing and to help me understand and hear what He's telling me. Because I think many times we don't hear. We ask, but we don't hear when He talks to us. And I, I try to listen and pay attention. What is it like to be the owner of two very important sports teams here in New Orleans, two institutions? Um, you know, I, I don't feel any different than I did when I had my small design business for 30 years. I just feel like it's a business and it's just run the same way, faith-filled and making sure that you do the right thing every day. And th that's how I run it. <laughs> what would you like the Hispanic community to know about you? Um, you know, I feel like um, I'm kind and um, faith-filled and I try to be uh, fair with every decision I make. And I think that's all you need in life. I think. Uh, Hispanic population, it, a very important part of our lives is faith too. We come from, uh, many of the countries are Catholic too, and that's something that we share here in New Orleans mm -hmm. and in Louisiana. Um, so that's a, a starting point when we share that with, uh, with New Orleans and Louisiana. Uh, coming from different parts of the Latino countries, uh, from Latin America, from Spain, we were not into the sport that much, into the football. You were not either. No. Uh, <laughs> Share a little bit about it. You know, it. neither was my husband. My husband, when he first bought the team, didn't know anything about football. So I feel like our lives sort of paralleled as we were going along. And because um, I didn't know anything about football and really wasn't interested. But once you get into it and you understand it, and I got into it because of his passion, and I just sort of followed his lead, and it just sort of became part of my life too. Isn't it also because it's much more than a sport here? Oh, it how is. we take the Saints, how we perceive the, the Pelicans. It's well, it is. It's part of the community. It's more than football and more than basketball. It's about people coming together and just being together and communicating with each other. And that's more what it's about, having fun together. What is your vision for the future of these two organizations? What would you like to see? Well, I hope to bring some more championship games to the city. Um, hopefully a championship for the Pelicans and hopefully another Super Bowl for New Orleans for the Saints. The Pelicans and the Saints are in this same building, right? They practice here. Yes. Uh, actually, the Pelicans are right across the right. parking lot. And, uh, and Drew Brees has a very a special relationship now with Zion. Too. He does, yes. So, uh, tell me about that. How mm -hmm. do you think this is going to work where both organizations, being two different sports, are going to go hand in hand. Well, you know, it's always been that way. Ever since we bought the Pelicans, 
we have a cafeteria that both teams eat in that cafeteria. So they've always kind of been together. They've never really been separated. But lately, it just seems like it's starting to click because we're talking more and more about all of us getting along and we're one big family. You know, our car dealerships, our office building, every, we're all one family. And so we bring everybody together. And then from that one family, we create all these fans, which is another part of our family. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's what makes it work. Is that sense of family what got you ambition that you already practice? Because I see you on the field, uh, hugging the players oh, yeah. and congratulating them and all oh, that. Oh, yeah. I, um, I love all the players. I think they're great. I just, um, you know, I mean, you just feel like they're part of you because they're working real hard and you enjoy seeing them succeed. Mm -hmm. What do you think is your biggest accomplishment? Um, gee, that's, that's a tough question because I don't really think I've accomplished that much. I, uh, well, I can tell you from our perspective, there's a, you're now a role model. Uh, for very young uh, Latinas that want to, or want to, you know, uh, thrive to be like you. Well, thank um, you. What would be your advice for them? Um, to stay true to yourself, always be honest, try to be kind to everybody, and um, just live life happy. It yeah. makes a difference. It sure does. Do you think this is going to be the year that we're going to win? I That's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> In God's plans, I hope it is, yes. How do you prepare on game day? Do you have any special routine that you follow? Oh, uh, you know, the day before game day, I prepare my clothes and everything I'm going to wear. And that helps me to be less stressed. And so I can get dressed in a short period of time to get to the stadium. And before every game, we have Mass. Archbishop Amen celebrates Mass for us. And then we go down on the field and greet people and take pictures and, and then hopefully win the game. How do you manage when, when we're not doing well in the first part of the game and you have to uh, socialize and you have to say hi to everybody? And well, you're, in the back of your mind, I'm sure that you're thinking, I, I, I hope this gets better, right? Well, you know, I really don't because it's a game and uh -huh. it's a ball. And sometimes it goes your way and sometimes it doesn't. You hope that it always comes your way, right. but it doesn't always. So you just, I mean, I really, I don't get upset. I just get disappointed for the men that play so hard and work so hard to, to win the games. That's very wise. Well, thank you so, so much for being here with us. Well, thank us. you for having me. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for being on our show, Que Pasa New Orleans, and also on our newspaper, Que Pasa Newspaper, Arts, Culture, Entertainment, Us Latinos. The Hispanic community is very, very happy and honored to have oh, you. Oh, thank you. Show. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank, thank you, so, you much. so much. Thank you. Thank you.